Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, Tea Sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I got my girl, Emily, in the house. Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. So it's been a lot going on. Oh, my Mm -hmm. gosh. I swear, like this past week, week and a half. So I really want to talk about all the things that's going on in Hawaii. Um, It is just devastating. Just watching everything with these forest fires you know, everybody on the island of um, Maui and what they're going through in Lahaina, I think the whole situation is just insane. And it really makes you think about your mortality. Like if you were in a situation like this, what would you do? You know, you had people out there where it's literally raining embers down on people, where the embers from the wind and the smoke and the fires are burning people's skins. People are running with their babies. People had to wait in the water. It was just, just all these stories have just been just so heartbreakingly sad. Yeah, it's really sad. And, um, you know, I've talked about before, especially uh, the past couple of winters, how cold it's been and certain things that you can do to prepare, you know, generators, things like that. But in a situation like this, like, what could you do? There's there's really not a lot that you could do to to prepare for something like this I mean if something's on fire and you know there's nothing you can do right and I know a lot of people are you know there's a lot of stuff coming out now that there were no warnings there were no sirens blaring right you know so many people were still sleeping in their homes and they just happen to smell something or eventually wake up and there's literally fire coming down your block and I remember a few years ago when I talked about the situation in Hawaii when they got the alert that the island was being bombed, mm-hmm. remember? And I'm like, you know, and it ended up being a false alarm, but people were so scared. People were putting their kids in the sewers. They were hiding their kids, you know, in in closets and bathtubs because they thought some type of torpedo was coming from another country to, you know, just blast the island of Hawaii. So people were like extremely scared. And I'm just like, you know, if that alarm if that alert could go off years ago, where literally the whole island was in chaos trying to find hiding, where was the alarm for this, for this whole fire situation? Why did they not turn off all of the electricity? Because that caused even more, like once the electricity was flowing with the fires, it was causing things to explode and, you know, live wires on the ground. So I just feel bad for the people who got in their cars, you know, trying to drive away And, you know, you're trying to head out. There's only one way out, one way in. And a lot of people died in their cars, you know, not even from the burning, but like the smoke insulation and them not knowing what to do. Many people ended up leaving their cars, abandoning their cars and just jumping in the water to save their lives. Yeah, that's really sad. And um, I thought about that as well, because I I remember the whole ordeal. It's like somebody accidentally pressed a button and there was no way to to reverse it. And it's like, so y'all could do that, but y'all couldn't send out, you know, we get messages all the time, thunderstorm, severe thunderstorm warning, Mm -hmm. amber alerts, things like that. So I just found it really hard to believe that there was no way whatsoever for them to send out warning. And then the aid, you know, firemen and stuff like that in the area come and run out of water. It's like, what the hell? It's, it's very, um, it's really sad and it it got it makes you think you know like I know a lot of people always think that you know it's not that deep it's not that deep it's just a tragedy but there's so many things going on where they were just so ill prepared the people that live there um, are not getting the the care that they need they're not getting the help that they need and they're not even warning them about this fire that's clearly like massive like you said they didn't turn the electricity off there's no water like what is going on here exactly And I think that's the part that's just so frustrating is that I heard some people saying that, you know, there was nobody here to help us. You know, there were, you know, think about it, senior citizens stuck in, you know, citizens homes and facilities. You know, the nursing staff can only do so much. And at the end of the day, you're trying to save yourself as well. So some of those Mm -hmm. people got left, you know, there were old ladies who could no longer walk. You know, people have to really choose. They're saying the death toll right now is like, like 98 people, BS. 
Yeah, I call bullshit too. Yeah. No way. No yeah, that fucking death way. Toll has to be at least a thousand plus people. And then when you think about it, think about the people who went to the water to try and save themselves and you're breathing in all this smoke and you're also trying to keep yourself afloat. There were a lot of people who were, you know, who were getting knocked out by the smoke and then drowning. Are there yeah. bodies that were going to be found? You know, who knows? The one man, he told this story and it just made me cry. He went in, um, it was him, I think it was like three other people. Um, he ended up calling his mom. She caught the Coast Guards. But he said it was about probably like 50 people total that just decided to run into the water. And some people had like newborn babies in their arms, you know, like a few months old. He That's said so by the time they got, re yeah, by the time they got rescued hours later, there was no babies, no babies. Oh my no God. Boats. So imagine just the devastation of people, you know, they were in that water for hours. So you can only yeah. hold on to your kid for so long. And especially if you're being affected by the smoke, you know, maybe they also drowned with their babies. But he said yeah. there were several people who went into the water with small children. And when they were rescued, there were literally no children and absolutely no babies. All that is so devastating. And then, you know, not to mention, I'm not super familiar with um, how the, the water is as far as like in that area in Maui and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're holding on to a baby and you're in water. I'm assuming you're having to move out a little bit further from, you know, right where the, the beaches and stuff like that are. It, it's hard to tread in water. And then the waves, you don't know how the current is sometimes. You know, they're saying all this was from a um well that that was one of the things that i saw that the winds that made everything so bad was um i don't know if it was from hurricanes but obviously it was very windy mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's very windy so i'm assuming the waves are going to be a little bit you know hard mm -hmm. to deal with as well so i couldn't imagine there's been times i've been swimming in the ocean and just trying to stay above water is hard enough but yet you're holding on to your child like that that's so devastating it really is and you know, it's it's a lot. It's it's so much. We're going to go ahead and watch some clips. Um, Joe Biden has also come out and he claims that he's going to, you know, give them money to help them, which oh, is I'm very, sure he is. Yeah. Which is very interesting because the amount is only seven hundred dollars. But OK, Joe. Yeah. Like what the fuck they going to do with that? Come on. Exactly. Now. So let's go ahead and watch some of these clips here. FEMA also authorized one time payments of seven hundred dollars per household folks have been displaced so they can do the immediate things of just taking care of medications and prescriptions that they so badly need. We're working with the state to make sure survivors have lost. New tonight, firefighters on the front lines in Lahaina are telling harrowing stories of watching their own town burn while the water ran out and they had to flee. Our Daryl Huff has more. Our resources were pretty much overwhelmed. Union leaders who met with Maui firefighters yesterday described the wind-driven fires bearing down in Lahaina as being like a blowtorch, as water for the 25 to 30 firefighters ran dry. Fighting fire for their lives, getting overran, trying to have a captain that's, you know, they need to get out to a burn center, hydrants aren't working. That's no different than cops being in a gunfight without bullets. We started talking about, you know, what their concerns were looking into the future. And one thing that some of them talked about and something that other residents have been very vocal about is concerns over gentrification, over permanent displacement of the people uh, here in, in Lahaina and, and in the areas that were lost or that were burned. Uh, that's something that is because Hawaii and certain several of the of the towns in Hawaii have become incredibly expensive for residents. So the people in Lahaina who lost their homes, uh, some have been reporting, and we haven't confirmed this, but on social media, people have been reporting that some realtors, uh, real estate developers, might have reached out and tried to buy their homes. That's of course something that we'll continue reporting on, and and we'll try to corroborate. But that's always a concern in catastrophes like these that people that somebody might want to come and take advantage of, of those in a vulnerable situation. You see entire families who've lost every single thing they have and they're living on the air mattress and a cot and a chair. The whole town of Lahaina is no more. I'm completely heartbroken over this and I know all of you are too.
Lahaina in ruins and 96 confirmed dead as celebs who live in Hawaii rally to support fire ravaged Maui. You know what this week has taught me is that when you don't know what to do, you do whatever you can. Oprah visited evacuee shelters all weekend, bringing supplies and emotional support. Today I brought back personal hygiene products, and the other day it was towels and sheets and pillows, and the day before that it was water. At some point I will make a major donation after all of the smoke and ashes have settled here. Jason Momoa is advising people not to visit the island while residents mourn and recover from the disaster, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson encouraging fans to donate. Thank you guys around the world for all of your love and your support, your light, your prayers. Thank you for sending them to the islands of Hawaii. I will continue to get as much information as possible. There's so many needs. Musician Mick Fleetwood was visiting family in Los Angeles when the fires hit. He chartered a plane to the island with much needed supplies. Selfishly, I haven't lost a family member. I didn't lose my house. It could have happened, but it didn't happen. So you immediately go like, I'm really lucky. Now what the hell can I do? Right now, we are in a state of emergency. Pure devastation. We've been pulling people out since last night. Unbelievable and apocalyptic. The town of Lahaina in Maui destroyed by wildfires and, quote, basically gone. At least 36 people dead, more than 270 structures destroyed. It's more in Hawaii. Actor Jason Momoa devastated and heartbroken. I come from a long lineage of watermen. Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich, who owns a home on the island, tells E.T. he and his home are safe. I'm on a big mountain in, uh -huh. in Hawaii, like uh -huh. 3,000 feet up. Oprah's estate, which is about 36 miles from Lahaina, is also believed to be out of harm's way. But Shamar Moore's girlfriend, actress Jezeree Dizon, shared heartbreak for her hometown. I am from Lahaina. Some of my family is missing. Uh, we can't get a hold of them. My childhood home has burned to the ground. And um, thousands of people have lost everything. Maui is also home to Owen Wilson and Clint Eastwood, who directed the Matt Damon film Hereafter, which filmed on Lahaina's historic Front Street. In the 2010 thriller, it's wiped out by a tsunami. But as the wildfires burned yesterday, the neighborhood looked more like a war zone. Another location impacted? The Four Seasons Resort, where the first White Lotus was filmed, is strongly discouraging non-essential travel to Maui. As for the journalists covering the devastation, it's not easy when most of the roads into town are closed. We're on a boat headed to Lahaina. This is one of the few ways to access the town. And what's incredible from this vantage point is the scale of destruction. We're talking miles of coastline completely burned. And I was like, oh, that's like a block and a half away. That was Susie's description when she walked down the street last week in the intense winds to see where the smell of smoke was coming from. Susie, her husband Junior, and her two daughters were all home as the situation worsened. Her husband even sprang down their house with the hose. When I was trying to gather some more stuff, um, Junior came back in the house and he was getting burned by embers flying in the, just flying around. The family of four ran to their car and maneuvered their way out of the area. Because of downed power lines, they were routed towards Lahaina's front street but chose to go the wrong way on a one-way street to get out. Honestly, I think that saved our lives because there's, you saw it, how many cars were stuck on Front Street. At one moment, I looked back at my daughter and she had one lone tear streak down her face. And the reason you could see it is because her face was covered in soot and ash. Um... So that hit me really hard. They are some of the most terrifying images from the fires. Desperate people rushing into the ocean, the only way to escape the flames. We're in the ocean. We're in the ocean. 19 year old Noah Tompkinson was one of them. <laughs> Along with his 13 year old brother, Milo. You're going to be okay, Milo. Good. And their mother. Both sides, to the left and the right, are on fire. White smoke starting to come, which means the fire's starting to die out. 
How, how did the idea to run into the ocean, how did that even happen? It, we kind of had it in the back of our mind the whole time that we wanted to be next to the water. If things got really bad, we could, you know, save ourselves by jumping into the ocean. And that, that is what it came to. If we walked across the street, we would have been like, we would have been in the fire. And Mila, what were you thinking, man? You're like a little guy and you've seen all this craziness in front of you. What was that like? I was just trying to survive. Like I was just in survival mode, that's it. The three waiting in the water for hours. Did it get to any point, Mila, where you were like kind of scared, like, when are we going to get rescued? Yeah, because they're taking like a really long time because they couldn't get to us because all the cars were blocked off. So we were kind of just trapped in the ocean. I didn't think we were going to get rescued. I thought we were going to have to wait till daylight and then swim out more and towards safety. Despite his fears, Noah kept the family calm. Jimmy, I'm okay. Don't look at the fire. Don't look. Oh, look this way. This is good. <laughs> Sorry. They waited there well into the night, the flames burning on land just beyond them. And when their mother started getting too cold... There was one point where we kind of like all huddled around her and just wanted to like keep her warm. We kept like rubbing her arms, just like trying to keep, create some warmth for her. Has your mom talked to you guys and, and thanked you for being by her side or...? We didn't save her. She also saved us. Like, if, if any of us were alone, I don't know if we would have made it. It was the fact that all, all of us were together that, that helped us the most. Mm. Oh my God, that's so sad. It's hard not to cry when you see Ooh. stuff like that. Yeah, especially being a mom of two boys, you know, yeah. watching that. And like he said, you know, we didn't just save her. She also saved us. You yeah, know? that's that's so sad. God. Which is just powerful. And it, it makes you think like, you know, what would you do in those situations? I can't swim, you know, yeah. like the boys can swim. They took swimming classes, but I can't. So that stuff like that just scares me and really makes me think like, wow, what if I was in that situation? Like, you know, what would happen? How would I survive? Um, so mm -hmm. just to see them come out of that is just a blessing. Um, yeah. But of course, you know, with everything that's going on, um, there's also the conspiracies, you know, like I know for two days I did research what started the fire. Nobody knew. Now, all of a sudden it was a hurricane. You know, I'm not a with no rain. Yeah, with that, no rain. Thank you. that's my point. Like, I'm not a weather expert, but I thought hurricanes usually bring torrential rain. You know how? Yeah, they usually do. Only bring fire and you know wind and fire like even with the wind where did the fire start like nobody has an idea of where the fire started now some people are saying that you know laser beams and this and that but honestly do you really have to spend thousands of dollars doing this whole laser beam thing a simple match in a gas can does the same job for less than two dollars right mm -hmm. um, hawaii is very prime real estate so oh yeah island. absolutely you know, rich in resources. Um, you have a lot of celebrities, billionaires who have homes there. They have some of the highest taxes in the country. I know we've spoke about this in like past videos and podcasts, you know, how expensive it is for the regular people who live in Hawaii. It's very expensive to live there. And um, they have been trying to fight these people for their land for generations. And many of them will not sell. They don't want to sell their lands. Hawaii is a very spiritual place. That's why I kind of looked at these fires initially as maybe something spiritual from the ancestors as well, like cleansing the land. Yeah, but I did. I, th well, that came across my mind too, just because um, I'm really into like, you know, mythology and and I, I will butcher every one of these names, um, you know, Roman mythology, Greek mythology, North myth Norse mythology, um, and then uh, Polynesian mythology, which is really, interesting i know a lot of people seen the, the movie moana that's one of my favorite disney movies it's really really good mm -hmm. but it made me think of in that movie the the demigod maui which is actually part of like polynesian um, mythology and stuff like that just the connections between maui and how he discovered fire and um, um i think i'm gonna butcher this but i think it was like he stole it from his grandma mohika mohika I, I'm, I'm butchering the names. But anyways, it, in that that lore is, you know, he went in to go get fire and she was like throwing fire at him and then burned everything down in the area and got, you know, from the embers. He taught the people uh, in the area how to, to start fires. And they're saying a lot of these fires started from really dry grass and stuff like that. We don't have an exact reason, but 
as far as um, the culture there and a lot of their uh, mythology, you know, there's there's water gods. There's uh, I think Pele. I might be saying that wrong once again. Um, there's a lot of history and fire goddesses, water goddesses. Even uh, I think it's Hamia is you know a, a goddess of Polynesian mythology. And you know there's several different stories and, and just like with Roman and Greek mythology, you'll get seven different stories of different you know deities and things like that. But I find it very interesting that there's so much water involved with people going into the ocean with mm-hmm. the, um, the, the water goddess. Ooh, I can't remember that one's name. And then the, the fire goddess uh, or goddess of volcanoes and stuff like that, Pele. And it's in Maui, which is, you know, the demigod Maui. Mm-hmm. Even in the movie Moana, remember like Taka was, you know, trying to burn down Maui. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, they did uh, a lot of research, I guess, and, you know, talked to people and came up with different uh, ideas of, of uh, Taka, which I believe was supposed to be a, um, ooh, the, it was kind of like a, a combination of the goddess uh, Pele and uh, her mother, Hamia. And then their sister was uh, Namika. And now, like I said, I know I'm saying all these names probably like incorrectly, but yeah, even in the movie, uh, Taka was chasing um, Maui. Maui throughout the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After he stole her heart from their land, which is from her land, which is, you know, really, really interesting when you think of the parallels between that story and what's actually going on in Maui right now. Yeah. Cause look how they're saying that real estate developers are calling these families, asking mm. to take over their land. And it's very tempting because th- what land is there to take over? Everything is gone. And a lot of these people, unfortunately, they don't have house insurance, you know, home insurance, because a lot of the the homes there have been passed down from generation to generation. So, you know, now that it's burnt down, it's gone. And I think for me, I got very emotional even looking at the fire, because when you look at a place that you grew up, um, it reminded me of 2020, like what happened mm. here in the Twin Cities, And, you know, just being down there on the South side and watching these fires and everybody was just so entranced. And, you know, just thinking back to like the footage that I shot and we hear the natives, they're drumming their, their war drums. And, you know, um, all these people from out of town, we're hearing these different accents, these agents of chaos who are down there. There's this stand up Mm -hmm. with the police and you just see like, you know, these buildings in the background burning and embers. And I remember like, just even the next day when St. Paul started burning and we were like in my old neighborhood and over there by where the skyline was, where everything was just on fire. Like I broke down at the bridge and just broke down, like just crying, like Alina had to pick me up. And I'm just like, just breaking down, just in fucking tears. People are like calling my phone because I was on live on Facebook. And Mm, um, I remember. Yeah, it was just, it was just, it was just overwhelming because When this is like your home, that's all you know. These are your memories, you know, walking across the bridge, going to the south side, you know, dropping, you know, Tay-Tay off because he spent so much time with his grandmother over there, you know, getting his Halloween costume with his grandmother from that Target that they burnt down. So even all the memories that the kids have from being over there on Lake and, and everything else, you know, they grew up more on the south side than they did out here even with me. And so when I hear like the rock and I hear, you know, the natives that live there just saying there's nothing left, that like everything is gone. And granted, we've been able to rebuild, but that's not the South side I grew up on. Everything is gentrified. Now there's all these condos popping up. You know, the rent for these condos are starting at $3,000 plus, you know, Mm -hmm. the, the older homes, the older buildings that were there, all of it is gone. Like those memories, you know, like, yeah, they've rebuilt, but it's not the same. Yeah, who are they? Who are they rebuilding for, though? Is is yeah. really the question? You know. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.